Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems. Today we're going to be continuing our addressing weak point series with the deadlift lockout. So improving your low back strength, your glute strength, and of course your technique in the deadlift is going to help, help with this. So check out our deadlift pillars for both conventional and sumo deadlifts, as well as the other installments of our addressing weak point series. The deadlift lockout is driven by glute and low back strength as well as the upper back. Oftentimes a poor lockout can be related to problems in the starting position or a loss of hip position throughout the lift. But for this section, we will assume that your technique is stabilized, that you just need to improve strength in those specific areas. Elevating the bar onto blocks typically two to four inches high can be a useful way to strengthen the lockout, though it seems to work differently for conventional versus sumo deadlifters. For the conventional deadlift, block pulls are often weaker than pulls from the floor. This is due to the lifter's inability to generate leg drive with the bar in the elevated position, causing the back and hips to have to work harder to move the weight. Overloading these areas will help strengthen the lockout for the conventional puller. For the sumo deadlifter, block pulls are almost always stronger than pulls from the floor, but training them for maximum weights in low rep ranges is so neurally taxing that you can't perform enough volume to build the hypertrophy and general strength needed for carryover to an improved lockout. If you're a sumo puller looking to use block pulls to improve your lockout, I'd suggest training them mostly in the 4 to 8 rep range for multiple sets and reserving any maximal block pulls in the 1 to 3 rep range for a mechanical overload tool. The glutes are a very powerful hip extensor and can be critical to a strong lockout as well as maintaining low back health. Both the barbell hip thrust and barbell glute bridge can be useful exercises to build hypertrophy and strength. These are not exercises to test your maximum on, but rather use them in the 5 to 12 rep range to build general strength and hypertrophy, ensuring that you are achieving full hip extension, not thoracic or lumbar extension on every rep. Try to get more out of less weight in these exercises by being strict in your technique and ensuring a strong contraction at the top of every rep. The good morning is a great exercise for building strength throughout the posterior chain, particularly in the low back. Many conventional deadlifters, particularly those with large midsections, will tend to have their hips lock out too early, causing their low back to have to finish the majority of the work when locking out a deadlift. The good morning is an excellent choice to build up low back stability and strength. As with the barbell hip thrust, I'd suggest training the good morning for moderate reps in the 5 to 12 rep range, focusing on strict technique and maximizing the effectiveness of the exercise with as light a weight as possible. If you struggle with proper hip hinging during the good morning, using a setup similar to a box deadlift or vert pull can be helpful. Anchoring a band around your waist that resists your hips can also be a way to improve hip extensor strength in this movement. Multiple different bars can be appropriate for the good morning to see what's most comfortable for you. Back raises or back hyperextensions are a very simple but effective strength builder for the low back. The technique is simple and unlikely to be screwed up. They can be loaded either with a bar across your back or holding weights across your chest. When performing back raises, ensure that you stay in a neutral rib position, not allowing your ribs to rise and flare. This will help ensure that your low back and glutes are working effectively. These are a great exercise to train for sets of 8 to 20 reps, and adding isometric holds at the top of the movement and controlled eccentrics are options to increase training effect without adding load. Similarly to the back raise, the reverse hyper is a very effective exercise to build up low back and glute strength. I do not suggest performing them in a swinging manner as this can lead to spinal flexion under load which can be injurious. Rather, perform your reverse hypers with strict control for maximum effect. These are great exercises to train for sets of 8 to 20 reps and adding isometric holds at the top of the movement and control these centrics or options to increase training effect without adding load. The final piece of the deadlift lockout is the ability to push the chest through and stand tall with the shoulders back and a strong upper back from shrugs at various angles can help ensure you aren't getting stuck with rounded shoulders. Train heavy barbell shrugs and dumbbell shrugs with an upright or slightly leaned forward posture will build strength in the upper and mid traps to ensure you can finish a heavy pull. Everybody, thanks for checking out that video on addressing weak points for the deadlift. Uh, if you're interested in learning more ways that you can improve your deadlift from better warmups to technique, mobility, exercise selection, program design, as well as programs for beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifters, check out the deadlift manual by yours truly. We also have the squat manual and bench manual available.